Now I'm going to chair the afternoon session, um, part of the afternoon session, and it's, um, it's very action-packed. There's going to be a lot happening. Um, there's going to be lots of people coming up. Um, it's kind of giving lightning talks, so just a few minutes. But um, I'm going to talk, um, I'm going to uh, chair the um, BL Labs Awards, and there are four categories this year. So just, just, just want to say a few words about how the w awards actually came about. Um, when we first started the labs project, um, the original uh, vision was to um, run an annual competition every year where we encouraged researchers particularly to come up with ideas of what to do with our collections. And the idea was we were going to tell them what we had, people would submit ideas, and then we would choose two of them and work with them over a period of between four and six months. And at the annual symposium, we would showcase their work. Um, the awards were not part of the original plan. They kind of evolved. And that was because as we were telling the world about the collections that we have, we began to see that other communities were actually engaging with our digital collections. So for example, artists, entrepreneurs, and educators. And um, so what we felt was, would be a good idea is um, to, to set up some awards to actually um, acknowledge and showcase work that had already been done with our collections. So lots of people often get confused with our competition and awards. Competitions are ideas of what you'd like to do with our collections. Awards are show us what you've already done. And those ca categories that emerged were for research, commercial, learning and teaching, and artistic. And I just wanted to bring this slide up, and, and you can sort of see how it's, it's, it sort of maps a little bit to the vision that the library has. And that's part of the idea of labs, is to sort of seep into different as aspects of the library. It's a very large organization. And I would urge those of you that want to understand the library, there's a fantastic a vision document written by Rowley Keating. And um, I kind of want, when I read that, I thought, oh, that's what the library's for. So if you, um, and it, it's, it's very, very, it's a very good document. But um, what I'd like to do now is, um, I'd like to start the awards, and is Jamie here? Has he arrived? Jamie, okay, he's just coming. Um, so we're going to start first um, with the Artistic Award, and this is going to be presented by Jamie Andrews, who's Head of Culture and Learning at the British Library. And this award recognises an artistic or creative endeavour, um, so I'd like to welcome Jamie Andrews, Head of Culture and Learning at the British Library. And Jamie's going to um, talk about some of the entries that we had for the Artistic Award this year, and obviously uh, announce the runner-up and the winner. Over to Jamie. Thanks, thanks, Mahendra. As Mahendra said, I'm, I'm Head of Culture and Learning, which is really what we call public engagement. Uh, and Stella, it was great hearing you talk and being reminded of just how many projects that Stella has led and collaborated on, uh, just how many of those projects have led to some really, really amazing outcomes for our schools programme, for our adult learning programme, uh, and for our exhibitions. They've really made them very special, so it was good to be reminded of that. Um, I'm sure you've heard already that we have a mission here, which is that we exist for everyone, uh, and that we exist for research, inspiration, and enjoyment. Uh, and research, inspiration and enjoyment run through really all of the awards. Uh, but particularly that word inspiration, I think, is relevant now as we look at the artistic award. It's the idea that's so, so important to us that the library, our collections, our expertise, us as an institution, isn't something that's there to be passively consumed. It's something that can prompt and provoke and inspire new creativity, new ideas. It can really, really, uh, through the imagination of artists, create very, very special things. And that's exactly what this award recognises. So there's a complex choreography at play here, and if I get it wrong, Mahendra will doubtless uh, call out from Prompter's Corner. But I think what we're going to start with is just a summary of a few of the entries. Um, as always, uh, as I'm sure would not surprise you, we received uh, a very diverse range of entries. Uh, but I do want to highlight just a couple 
now. Uh, first up is evolution of six second history social media animations, something that we wanted to highlight and that you can see in the foyer, uh, created by Nick Cave, who's the owner of Annie Tattoo's uh, uh, animations based in Birmingham. Uh, last year, he created 25 six second 3D animated videos, uh, which he released on Instagram. Uh, and they contain, of course, images from the BL Flickr Commons collection. Uh, that's something that we would certainly invite you to check out in the foyer, something that impressed us very much. Uh, moving on uh, to another entry that we would like to highlight, uh, Phantom Tomes. Uh, it's a lovely collaboration with uh, Giles Lane, an artist and designer, uh, and a founder of the creative studio Probosis, and his daughter Clara Angus Lane, who's a student at Elizabeth Garrett Anderson School in Islington. Uh, and this whole concept is based on games that they, uh, games of imagination and invention that they played together on walks through London. Uh, they've been inspired by authors, um, you won't be surprised to see, inspired by people like Edward Gorey, uh, and invented, uh, they've invented absurd and ridiculous book titles uh, and imagined their stories as a form of wordplay and learning. And you can see some examples here. Uh, you can see how the transformed covers their transformed covers for those books uh, then uh, match the design and typography of the originals found in our collections. Uh, they've used the self-publishing platform Bookleteer.com that Giles has developed, uh, and uh, the transformed titles then can easily be clicked back to those original scanned covers from our collections, something that we like very much. I think Giles is here today, so I don't know if you want to give a wave. I don't know where you are. Right, right at the back. So you'll have to all turn around and see him. Uh, do catch up with him afterwards, and you can see... Uh, obviously, more of his work on display in the foyer. Uh, a poster a day, a poster per day. Uh, another uh, uh, entry that we wanted to highlight and that we enjoyed very much. Uh, by Kayen Kwok, who's an artist, art director uh, based in Hong Kong, uh, who's been working with different media in her art piece, everything from oil painting, watercolour, to digital collage and installations. Uh, she has been working, and you can see some examples here, on a project uh, called A Poster Per Day for 365 Days. And she's used several different sources of image, but many of them have been taken from our British Library Flickr uh, Commons collection. Uh, you can see she's particularly interested in vint vintage, retro, pin-up, surrealist collages, uh, as, as uh, characterised by uh, the ones that you've just been looking at on the screen, the banana posters, for the first six days that you see on the screen. Moving on to British Library Face Swap, which is, which is an application that uses a video camera. There's more that will appear. There we go. Uh, to computer scan for faces, you can see. And when it finds a match for a real human face, it substitutes them for faces taken from that Flickr collection, that public domain Flickr collection. Uh, it also, because it's important to go back to the source, it also displays the title of the images and a scrolling list of thumbnails from the full image from which the face was taken. Uh, one more, Imaginary Cities. I'm not going to say more about that. You heard from Michael earlier, uh, Michael Takio Magruder, uh, who talked, I know, about his work and inspiration for this piece. So uh, just to uh, note that this was also a very strong uh, entry to this year's Artistic Award competition. So getting on to the serious business... Uh, firstly, the runner-up of the 2016 Artistic Award is British Library Face Swap. Tristan Roddis, John White and Neil Hawkins. We found that they had created something, something playful, something unexpected, something disconcerting, I dare say. Uh, something that comprehensively uh, mines and exploits our collections. And we are delighted that they're with us here today. Uh, or Tristan... Uh, and if, yep, Tristan is going to come up on stage. Uh, <laughs> and we have a few minutes. Tristan's just going to talk a little bit about uh, his uh, entry, uh, and we're able to take one question as well. So over to you, Tristan. Great. Uh, so I'll just try and turn. Ah, there's no mouth. Can we just turn that music down, please? Great, thank you very much. So uh, that's also from the British Library Sound Archive. Um, but anyway, this is just to demonstrate a bit of uh, the system in action here. Um, you can see it for real out in the foyer. Uh, and effectively, what you'll see here, this is our, our managing director coming in. 
um, and testing the limits of the system uh, with respect to uh, movement and, and jumping around like a deranged rabbit. Um, so you can see effectively what we're doing is uh, detecting faces <laughs> in a live video feed and then every time we detect those faces, uh, swapping it out for face that we've pre-detected from the uh, Flickr archive of uh, public domain images. We've got a, a, a beautiful old school uh, presentation here. So you have seen this. Uh, the question is, where does it come from? It comes from the, so the million images on Flickr. Uh, they contain all sorts of illustrations from historical documents. What we did in this case is it just picked the ones that have been tagged with people, which narrows it down to nearly 7,000, uh, and then retrieved a, a, a set of those, a, a representative sample, and ran that through some detection software. Um, and the, the, this idea is something which so I work for COGAP, we're a, a digital agency that normally deals with um, large online archives and collections, and that's normally uh, sort of very painstaking, careful work. This was the opposite uh, in that it was just a bit of fun. Uh, it came out of an internal hack day we had uh, where my, my first idea was to try to do eye detection and get people to line their eyes up in front of a video camera and then substitute it with uh, images that had the eyes in exactly the same place. It turns out there's two flaws with that. Uh, one is eye detection is not very good, face detection is much better. And secondly, it mainly just wasn't very fun. So uh, as, as soon as we actually managed to start compositing uh, images from the collection with people's faces, we thought this is a lot more amusing. So we switched to using full faces instead of eyes. Uh, and then we just wanted to obviously give it a bit of context there. So we give the, the captions underneath that tells you exactly where they came from. And we display the full image as a, a thumbnail sliding up uh, along the side so that you can see where that face comes from because um, often there's multiple faces in a single document, for example. Uh, so in terms of how we did it, uh, we, we bulk downloaded images using Python and Flickr and then pre-detected faces. Uh, all the face detection is done using OpenCV, the Open Computer Vision Library, with their uh, facial detection har cascade. Um, this is something I found a tutorial how to do. Uh, and then, so we do that, we pre-detect for the source images and then live detect, um, use, again, using Python OpenCV, and we feed the stream of the positions of the faces that it uh, finds in the video stream through to a, a web server, which then composites it using JavaScript and Canvas. Uh, how we like to make it better, um, you, you'll see that a lot of the images out there, they, they get quite pixely when uh, the, the face is, only represents a small proportion of the input image. So we'd like to use higher res images. It'd also be nice to switch to using um, my favorite uh, image retrieval protocol, which is the International Image Interoperability Framework. Uh, and this would mean we could um, transmit a lot less uh, data over the wire because we could just get the crops of the faces instead of having to load up the full high res image. And then things to do with it, I, I like it uh, in its form of it being an interactive installation that doesn't need any instructions. No, no one needs to know what to swipe or touch or press. You just turn up and you look at it and it does things. Uh, so I'd like to see it sort of maybe behind glass uh, and you could walk past an institution when it's closed and look in and suddenly see uh, results of their collection overlaid onto you. Or alternatively, uh, look at it turning into a web-based version where you could have it um, work uh, with, with any video input source, not just the one running from the, the local machine. Uh, I've been told I have time for one question. And if not, you can always come and find me uh, at the break where we, we've got a, a version of it running over in the corner. Great. Thank you. Justin, thank you so much and congratulations again. It's um, a wonderfully playful idea uh, and I love that you're thinking about uh, further applications um, of this for the future as well. That's really exciting. So, uh, well, Justin almost gave the game away but uh, managed to stop himself just. Uh, oh, let me just see, here we are. So, the moment that we uh, almost arrived at a minute ago is the announcement of the winner of this year's 2016 Artistic Award which it is 2017 that's it's <laughs> a useful clarification apparently <laughs> uh yes 
I am slightly behind the times. But 2017 winner is... It's Michael Takio Magruder for Imaginary Cities, which is a work you've heard about. <laughs> it brilliantly, brilliantly links our historic collections to new forms of creativity. Uh, the processes in this are in some ways rather complex, and yet the execution at the same time is brilliantly, beautifully simple. Uh, so a very, very worthy winner. Uh, Michael, I think in theory, is able to join us again via Skype. Do I need to press anything or will it just magically happen? <laughs> <laughs> Let's give him another round of applause. Michael, we, we heard earlier that, that badminton is a cruel mistress, which means that you can't be here to pick up the award. Uh, but many, many congratulations. Can you see us? Yes, yes, I can, I can see you all fine. Can you hear me okay, Jamie? Maybe the volume up a tiny bit. Okay. Many okay. congratulations. I don't know if you saw, but everyone has just been applauding you. Uh, we're delighted for you. Uh, we can't hand you anything uh, in person, but would you like to uh, say a few words uh, about the piece? A few well, more words I mean, about the piece. I, people have already heard me talk about the, the piece, so I, I'd rather just um, maybe say a few more things of thanks because, yes, this, like many of my projects, it's my artwork, it's my idea, but when I build these sort of large collaborative teams to realize the ideas, to bring them into kind of um, an exhibition, a series of works, it's, you know, it's, it's not just myself, and I, I, I really hope to get that point across. So, you know, the, the work of my collaborators, David and, and Drew, to sort of realize the back ends, everyone there at the BL, um, yourself, Mahendra, Adam, I mean, everyone from BL Labs, from Digital Scholarship, I've had wonderful interactions with the curators and uh, people from the culture and events team sort of over the, over the last year. And everyone, you know, has kind of helped feed into the project, sort of nurture the ideas, grow the ideas. Um, and then maybe just one, one final kind of thought that I, I've been having lately is that these days I really see libraries as less of, you know, repositories of knowledge, um, but more as these amazing kind of storehouses of culture that the, the work, say, that has been done in the British Library over the last 20 years in the sort of the onset, the history of digitization and creating these wonderful infrastructures um, that allow an artist like myself to actually make this kind of work. Um, uh, you know, often done behind the scenes um, and and these, these people, these teams, you know, all these researchers, technologists, academics that have fed into this process. Um, I mean, really, I honestly would like to thank them because without that work, my, my work can't exist. So, I don't know. Thank you. But Thank you for those kind words. Thank you for what you said about libraries, which is absolutely spot on. And we've lost you now, but it was great that you could connect with us uh, through the wonders of Skype. So that is it for what is definitely the 2017 Artistic Awards.